I hear a lot from the folks on the other end of that camera that, okay, I did this, and, and you know, it said HER2 positive or ALK or something else, you know, and it suggests a trial. So how, how am I going to get access to these drugs? Tony, are there trials out there that can help support this? So there are trials that are out there that do support this. Some of them are uh, national trials. Others are institutional trials. NCI Match is one of them. Uh, and I understand it's it's picking up steam and maybe close to essentially get to the to the target accrual. Taper is an ASCO uh, initiative that essentially is mostly geared to community uh, uh, practices, essentially trying to match. Uh, so if you find uh, uh, if you have a finding a molecular genetic finding on uh, on an NGS platform, um, ASCO would actually help link. Uh, to the company and, and essentially uh, uh, link patients and practices to the drug. There's my pathway uh, through Genentech with select targets, but there are also others that are institutional or network, network-wide. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunities uh, to essentially match those patients with the target. So you're an interesting group of panelists, right? Rep strong cooperative group representation, a huge clinical network, including all of Florida, basically, you know, three major centers around the country. You all have programs within your own systems to think about this mm -hmm. problem of the mm -hmm. ultimate basket studies that, you know, a doc in the middle of Florida could get on a Sarah Cannon trial? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the next step, I think, in clinical trial design is bringing the trial to the patient. There's a lot of work that's being done doing that now. There's also a lot of companies that are moving in clinical trial matching, mm. where you, you send as a patient, you contact them, and they work on trying to find the clinical trial nearest to you that makes sense. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of different options patients and physicians have right now. And a lot of us are thinking about this just in time. So yes. your doc identifies, and they're participating, and they get a quick IRB mm -hmm. and, a, and a drug. Yep. And, and data. What's Cooperative Group doing about all of this? Well, the Cooperative Group, uh, they were looking at a study called ASSIGN mm -hmm. in colon cancer, and that's pretty much been abandoned. Uh, one of the problems from the MATCH trial is the hope was that this would give insight into colon cancer, for example. A, a minority of patients on MATCH have had colon cancer. And I think, in fact, we don't have enough drugs that t hit the targets. So, in fact, there are studies with looking at HER2 and a couple of other uh, sort of clear-cut uh, things we can drug, but otherwise the cooperative groups are, are not doing, are not active in this. Many of us have said from various fora, podia, that, you know, the phase three randomized trial is dead. We don't need those anymore. Big phase three randomized studies, we don't want to do them. Is it true? No. no. So, so, still so, so yes and no. See, I like Come on, being you are, up close. You do small, single arm, <laughs> small randomized trials. That's right. Your so business. I, I think I think for some tumor types where you have an unmet need or you have a specific mutation where you see an amazing result, getting those single arm phase twos, good response rates to the drug to approval fast, yes. But I also think there's a lot of help in these large randomized phase three studies that provide us data sets like Allen's study where we can get, we can glean so much information. Now we can potentially approve a drug, but also we can learn much more about the different tumor types and, and how we should best treat certain subsets of patients. I'm thinking, we talked earlier about MSI high colon cancer patients now on Compendia based on two phase one, two trials. I think the total number of patients is under 100. It's a, it's a little bit more than 100, is it a little bit, pretty close. It's not much more than 100, Correct. and we're now on a guideline based on that. Well, and so I, having chaired the, I'm a vice chair of the colon gu cancer guidelines with the NCCN, and I think it, 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 this is a part of experiential. I mean, patient, this is not a trivial difference. In a way, as we look at the 1.4 month overall survival difference that may lead us to uh, drug approval, you see these amazing responses in patients. It's much more yeah. compelling sometimes. Great. Johanna, Tony, um, Alan, just thank you so much for being here today and discussing this. Um, I'd like to get some final thoughts from each of you, from our panelists, and Johanna, I'm gonna let you go first. What are some of the key takeaways around colon cancer precision medicine that our docs need to know? The future is bright. Hmm. Get your patients profiled. Let's learn as much about them as we can, both for their current treatment, but for treatments to come, and for collating the data so we can learn more about what specific subsets of colon cancer patients should be treated how, and immunotherapy is coming, even for the microsatellite-stable patients. That was like three things. Tony! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I do think this is an exciting time in, 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 in drug development and opportunities uh, to our patients. I agree with Jahan. I mean, I think molecular testing should become a standard rather than the exception and upfront, uh, given the, the, the slew of opportunities that we have both available through clinical trials, through platforms, and of course through incoming agents. Your thoughts? The message, I think, is that colon cancer is a nuanced disease, and in fact, it's not a one-size-fits-all treatment. I would encourage the community to really use their assets, their, their, the, if there is a center with expertise and research, to consider sending patients there, and it's also a multidisciplinary disease. You need all the pieces in place to do right by patients. Thank you all for this. And on behalf of our panel, we really thank you guys for joining us. And we hope you found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative.